Welcome to Vention Tips. Today, we'll cover how to program our linear actuators using machine logic and show you how to simulate a machine logic application within Machine Builder. This video will be composed of two main parts, configuring and programming. To get started, we'll need to bring in at least one of our linear actuators, which can be found under the linear motion category in the parts library on the left. In our case, we'll jump ahead and bring in four of our main linear actuator models, the enclosed ball screw, enclosed timing belt, standard timing belt, and the rack and pinion. To ensure that you are selecting the right actuator for your application, please visit our selection guide linked below. The final thing we'll need to do is add a four drive machine motion controller to our design. A controller is required in order to gain access to the machine logic editor. Don't forget, you'll need an e-stop module along with your controller. If you need help designing the actuators themselves, you can refer to our video tutorial on Machine Builder's Configuration Assistant. Also, you can ask a question in our user forum, linked below. Now, we can start to configure our linear actuators. Begin by navigating to the Machine Logic tab at the top of your screen to open the editor window. From here, click on the Add Actuator icon and select the one you would like to configure from the drop-down menu. In our case, we'll go with the enclosed timing belt. Next, give the actuator a descriptive name. If all parts are connected properly in Machine Builder, the configurator will automatically link the motor, homing and end stop sensors, as well as any brake or gearbox installed. Hovering over each of these sections in the configuration page will highlight the corresponding part in the design space. If you'd like to attribute a specific sensor to an actuator, you can click on it inside the CAD to find its unique ID and use this to configure your actuator. If you'd like to swap the home and end stop sensors, simply select them from the drop down menu. Clicking the advanced drop down menu will open up the option to edit the current supplied to the motor. However, this is only applicable for your deployed machine and does not affect the behavior in CAD. The value given is already defaulted to that required by the motor mounted on your actuator. We'll go ahead and configure the other three actuators. You'll notice that if you attempt to add a fifth actuator to the configurator, it will default to a pneumatic as the selected controller supports a maximum of four drives. If we had selected the Machine Motion 1 drive at the beginning, we would only have been able to configure a single linear actuator instead of four. This is done to mirror the real life capabilities and deployment of your Vention machine. Step two, programming. For this demonstration, we've pre-configured the actuators for you so we can jump straight to programming the machine. If you'd like to follow along, you can click the design link in the description below. When in the Visual Sequence tab, create a new application from the Add App icon and give your application a descriptive name. This is found under the Variable section. Next, we'll move over to the main sequence and click on the Add Command icon and select Add Motion. From the drop-down menu, we'll select our Y axis. To the right of this, you'll find the Motion drop-down menu. It contains a list of all relevant motion commands available to the selected actuator type. If you'd like to learn more about each of these motion commands, click on the help icon just above the menu. We'll start by adding a move to home command for each of our actuators. This is always recommended as it will set the zero position which will act as a reference point for each actuator. Ensure that you have properly fixed the structural portion of the design. This will help you control which parts of your automated equipment are moving and which parts are stationary. Here, we'll demonstrate both scenarios. If we unfix the frame, the frame will move. If we fix the frame, the enclosed ball screw will move. To change the speed and the acceleration of the system, we need to add another motion command and select all actuators from the drop down menu. This is because all the actuators must run at the same speed and acceleration. You can also drag and drop your commands to rearrange the order of execution. From here, we'll add two more motion commands to showcase the last options available. First, we'll have the Y axis do a move relative by 300 millimeters. This will move the actuator 300 millimeters in relation to its current position. After this, we'll execute a move to position for the X axis. With this command, you are given two options. The first is to input a number into the position or variable field, which will move the actuator to that location along its available travel. The second is to press teach position. This will record the current location of the gantry within the CAD and fill it in the available position field. To simulate your program, simply press the play icon at the bottom of the window.
If you would like to have multiple axes move at the same time instead of individually, you can click on the Add Actuator icon below the Actuator Selection menu. This will change the Single Move command to a Combined Move command. From here, you can select which actuators you would like to have move simultaneously and to which position each should travel to. In our case, we'll have each of our actuators move to a new position. Once complete, press play to simulate. That wraps up our session on programming linear actuators in machine logic. Thanks for watching and happy designing.